hey guys welcome back to my channel um we just continue on heft kernel exploitation series and this is the um this is the third video and the fourth blog post that i just published so in this video we're going to talk about null pointer dereference um this is the third exploit um i'm trying to like develop a strategy for every single blog post that i'm publishing on the kernel exploitation so I will try to keep it up like that, um, like what did we do in the previous videos or in the previous blog posts and what is this one about. So if you want to recall, in the Stack Overflow um, kernel exploitation scenario, we put our shellcode in user land um, in an allocated memory and we executed it in kernel land. It was a very straightforward and easy scenario. It was the first one that we saw um it was basically introduction to kernel exploitation after that we saw another one arbitrary overwrite um there was a different strategy for us to exploit this vulnerability first of all we saw well what does it mean um it was basically writing the value pointed up pointed by what to the memory location referenced by where so we were basically able to write our shellcode um to the place that we um that's been referenced by where um for that we used various um Win my, uh, windows api calls and we learned about them checking the reference uh in this one there's nothing different again we will use various um windows api calls like if we look in the total um number of api calls in this three blog posts already i think it's over 10 um so it's it's really good exercise for us to get familiar with windows api as well so what's going to happen in this one is we're going to write a pointer location um, where the value of this pointer is null and um, used by an application that points the valid memory location. And this way we'll be able to do um, um, get a shell at the end of the final exploit. So again, in the blog post series, I'm trying to have a strategy. So what kind of steps are we going to go through? Because my mind works like that when I see like a very long blog post um even if it's like full of so um precious information uh, my mind blows in the beginning i have to see some kind of strategy like in a more categorized or catalog manner so i am writing this down in the beginning uh, so we can break it down one by one so what are we gonna do we're gonna talk about some theory um and we're gonna check the source code but it's very straightforward in the source code so um we will just directly find IOCTL and we will try to identify the vulnerability by um, writing an initial script and seeing it in IDA to see the disassembled code so that we can try to understand what's going on. After that, we're going to write our final code. Um, for that, we will go through the final exploit steps, um, which I will break it down at the end. There's nothing complex here. Most of these things are coming from the previous exploit. So we just need to understand the few basics of this exploitation phase. Okay, um, so I included here some information. I will just go through it very quickly. Theory, you can just skip this part. It's like less than one minute probably I will explain. So we will see this later. Non-paged memory versus paged memory. What does uh, what do these mean? So I will just go in, going through this quickly. Um, so at um, every single boot up, um, the memory manager basically creates two memory pool. One of them is paged pool, and the other one is non-paged pool. So both of these are dynamically sized, and um, they are basically used for kernel components to allocate system memory. Um, they start at a certain size um, based on the physical memory of the system and um, uh, they can grow up their size uh, and this is determined by the system at the boot time. Um, the paged pool, this one, um, that can page out, meaning that it can be lowered. Um, and this one consists of virtual memory that can be paged in and out of the system. On the other hand, the non-paged pool, uh, this cannot be paged out and it's used by drivers um, so that they can be accessed anytime um, at any IRL. So, a few more information. Uh, the non-paged pool consists of virtual memory addresses that are guaranteed to reside in physical memory as long as corresponding kernel objects are allocated. And uh, just extra information, nothing to do with comparison between page and non-page pool, but uh, for page pool, 
uh, just improve performance system with single processor have three paged pools and multi processor have five, pa five paged pool. So it's just extra information to provide here uh, that I collected from a Q and A basically on um, um, on a Microsoft page. So another thing, null pointer dereference. Um, so this vulnerability exists in Windows Seven. Uh, starting from Windows 8, this uh, vulnerability is mitigated because null page is not available anymore. Um, it is still possible as far as I know on Windows 10 32 bit, but um, um, and other versions, it's not possible currently. Just something to add, but uh, we're not being proud, not just testing Windows 10. We're also still testing Windows 7 as it's still being used. So cool. So for source code review, as always, in the GitHub repository, I'm checking the um, relevant files, thinking that this is a white box approach that we already have access to the source code. So there are two files, as always, again, there's the header file and there's the C code, the source code. On the header file, again, we will see some variables being defined, some um, um, data structures defined and stuff. So nothing crazy here. But in the source code file, again, it's very straightforward for this vulnerability in the source code. Mm, but just we need to talk about a few stuff. So uh, in here, in, in the initial uh, part of this, uh, this uh, source code file, um, there's basically a comparison. Um, so the user value, if it's equal to this value that's been given in here, um, if they are different, uh, null pointer dereference, as you can see it in here, uh, is set to null. So we're gonna make sure that the value is different from that in order to trigger the vulnerability later. Um, this is what we see from this code. Um, as always, um, have the vulnerable driver. Um, this is incredible because you're seeing the secure code and also the vulnerable code at the same uh, at the same time. So you can compare and learn about what's the secure version is. So as you can see it in here, um, in the secure version, it's checking if the null pointer dereference is set to um, null. And in the um, vulnerable version, it's not. So that's the entire vulnerability. So it's very easy to read and understand from the source code, but we will make sure that we will focus more on IDA and we can check the disassembled version to understand what's going on. So to IOCTL code, so let's see. So what we're doing is we're turning on IDA, um, we're loading the driver, as always we're going to the functions, I'm going to sort it through uh, so I can find IRP device IOCTL handler quickly. Uh, this is the third time we are doing it so it's pretty straightforward now, I'm going to check the text view so I can see the um, beginning of subroutine as well. So this is the IRP device IOCTL handler function. And as you can see, it calls different subroutines like numpage pullover uh, flow, arbitrary override, etc. And we will just scroll down to find the um, null pointer de reference one, as you can see in here. All right, null pointer de reference IOCTL handler is here. We're just double clicking to see what's going on and we're gonna see it in the graph view, um, how very tricking the Null pointer the reference vulnerability here. Um, that's like the graph view for us to see the overall picture, which call we need to um, trigger in order to go to the vulnerability. Basically, I'm going back to text view. Uh, I'm gonna find the IOCTL code very quickly now. I'm checking um, which function is this uh, being triggered, and I'm just gonna go back. You can do it with arrows. Uh, if you go up or you can just click on the function and which will show you basically where this function appeared before and before that as you can see there is mu ax ecx and then sub ax there's this value and it's basically compared um, and it's jump zero to this function so in order to do that we're going to make sure that the ax is this value so this is our iocTL so in this way we found the iocTL code then we're gonna write the initial exploit. I'm gonna zoom it out a bit. Um, very straightforward. I'm trying to like write it very structured so you can you guys can see it. Handle, it's the same thing we did in the previous videos. Create file A, API call that we're gonna use, nothing different. With device IO control, we're gonna basically write the um, IOCTL and also handle that we define in here. For the DLLs, there's no complex 
um, DL, um, there's no other DLS we need to include here as we are just using create file A and device A control that both use kernel 32 DLL. So we're going to include it in here, a few uh, import statements here that we're going to include, error handle, hand, handling, and we're just going to include like 100 A's. If you remember from the source code, it was checking if this is some value with bad B0, etc. So it's nothing to do with that. Um, but yeah, we'll just move on now. So we're going to do IDA analysis a bit. Um, so, all right, let's go back to IDA and let's see what's going on. Um, and all right, we're going to write the comments in here. XOR EDI EDI. We are um, setting EDI as zero in this way. We're checking what, what's going on in here. There's this I'm prop read. And then X allocate pool with tag call is called. And there are three arguments if you check the uh, let's pause that in order for me to follow both together i um save that part let me go down there so if you check your x allocate pull with tag um from the um documentation from microsoft it takes three arguments pool type number of bytes and tag of course in the other way around since we're checking in the disassembler um, and as you can see, that's the value for hack. If you just um, click on it and uh, check for the ASCII value, this is the value hack in the reverse order. I'm just going to write it as a comment so we can follow it up. Not jack, hack. Yeah, and the second one is number of bytes. Eight bytes is allocated here. Um, I'm just going to write it as a comment again. Um, the first one was tag and the reverse order of OVC. And the third one would be pool type zero, um, which belongs to the um, non-paged pool. Cool. Um, we just go on. I'm seeing this arc zero value. This is the user value that's provided. So I'm just going to rename this to read the code better. So we put the user value in EAX register and later we're comparing it with this value bad um, D0, B0 or something. So we're com comparing this in this line and jump not zero, we're continuing basically or we're in the green path we can say. Um, so that's something to note as well. So our user value is not that value that we're gonna, we're just seen in here. Just note this down. Um, since it's not zero, we just go on with the next jump um, and then we are seeing this function in here. Um, you know, if we scroll down a bit more, uh, there are a few more things that we need to talk about. After this um, debug print, the print function, uh, we're seeing the argument pop ECX and then the call to ESI, the pointer that we mentioned in here, plus four. And ESI was zero, if, as we saw in the previous um previous lines and this one, um, the call, this is the pointer at the address uh, 0x04. So it's going to reside on the null page and our code will basically, basically dereference a null pointer in this point, at this point. I'm just writing this as a comment, so the address is 0x4 that we're going to write at the end of our shellcode. Um, I give more information about the um, the API calls that we're using in the allocate virtual memory, for instance. You can just refer to that. I try to include the syntax of it and also the values that we're using and why we're using it with a um, few more reference URLs. So what we're going to do is... We're going to go to our final exploit and we're going to see on um, action how it works and how we're going to get a shell. As always, I'm just trying to like include it like that so that I can include screenshots and you can see guys like what kind of structure um, I, my code has. So let me zoom in a bit. As always, we're starting with imports and then DLLs. Um, these two DLLs will be needed because of the other API um, call that we're going to use. So um, we're going to use NT allocate virtual memory. Uh, again, I skipped that part in the video, but uh, please go refer to the um, blog post. Um, so we're going to use this API call to basically allocate our shellcode buffer at the pointer location, which was ESI plus four, which was 0x4. 
So we're going to do it. Um, we're going to look at the syntax of empty allocated virtual memory. I gave the explanation for every single parameter value in here. So you can just write it down um, once you understand it. Again, error handling I'm doing for every single API call. The shell code, the same as the one that we used in the previous videos. Virtual alloc, we need to do it to bypass step. Um, I'm going to do, I'm going to use um, memo in this one. Um, that's why we included the uh, other um, DLLs. So just something, um, something different to include here. Um, and then create file A and device IO control, just to keep it in the same screenshot, I write it like that, but actually buffer variable, um, the, this is buffer actually, it's supposed to be above that. So um, the same thing, create file A to create a handle and device IO control to write our IOCTL and also include the buffer in here. And then we're gonna write the buffer and as always call the shell um, to, pop a sh to pop up a shell. So I'm just gonna write the exploit to see that we're gonna get a shell as and to order the system. So that was all. Um, you can always refer back to the blog post that I wrote. I try to keep everything in a um, categorized manner to understand like the big picture first then focus on every single um, subcategory, let's say. But I'm not the first person that wrote such blog posts. There's so many people out there that basically build um, this entire uh, kernel exploitation journey, so I'm just a newbie in here. Um, don't judge if I said something wrong, but um, I don't know. Everybody's minds works differently. So sometimes you're reading one blog post that um, refers to so many people. So many people can understand from that one. And sometimes you see something completely different, but you understand from that. So I think that's the beauty of InfoSec that um, we share with each other. So hopefully this blog post and the video is useful because I remember that I struggle a lot. I still struggle when I'm learning a new topic and um, the blog posts are not sometimes uh, detailed enough and I need to do my own research. Uh, it's a good feeling when you learn by yourself um, without anybody's help, but sometimes you may need a little push to learn from a video or um, from a different blog post that keeps the categories or like the pattern differently so hope this helps um drop a comment and i'll continue writing more blog posts on heft and other kernel exploitation topics and we'll try to create videos because editing takes time i think that's the only part that i'm lazy at so i'll try to create more videos for you guys and hope you are learning from it cheers